Alam nyo ba guys na nag-graduate si Sir Ken ng Valedictorian at Cum Laude nung college siya. Mas mataas po yung academic performance ng mga estudyante sa Group A na mas nagtiwala sa sarili nila. to our YouTube channel. So for today's vlog, we will be sharing 8 study tips for students proven by science. So last week, as you can see in our vlog, I shared a day in my life as a student at Nanyang Polytechnic University of Singapore. That's why I'll be sharing some study tips and also we will add some study tips based from that experience proven by science. So this is perfect for the students that are ongoing na yung pasok ngayon at magpapasok na. So you can prepare and take note of these study tips. For the first study tip, ask yourself. Tama, di ba? Tanungin mo sarili mo, bakit ka tinatamad? Bakit ka lagi naglalaro ng games? Bakit ka lagi nanonood ng Netflix? Bakit ka lagi nanonood ng YouTube videos? Or bakit ka lagi nakatutok sa social media? There's nothing wrong about that, but you should know your limits. You have to go back to the main cause or the root cause kung bakit hindi effective ang pag-aaral mo. Okay, that's actually right, Matt, because if you do not know the root cause, parang sakit eh. Okay, pag hindi mo alam kung ano yung sakit, you can't give the proper medication to it. Kapag hindi mo alam yung root cause, hindi mo alam kung ano yung next step na gagawin mo. So you have to assess yourself first kung bakit hindi ka nakakapag-aral ng maayos. Maybe you're giving too much time sa panunood ng Netflix. Maybe you're giving too much time sa pag-focus sa mga hindi naman important details sa lesson. So you have to ask yourself first, bakit ako di effective na estudyante? Bakit ako di effective mag-aral? You have to acknowledge that. So that in the next step, alam mo na agad ko ano yung susunod na gagawin mo. Just like any disease, as you give medication to a patient. For the second tip, mindset. Sure ako, karamihan sa inyo mag-a-agree sa akin na minsan wala sa talino yan na sa tamang pag-iisip o positive mindset kung paano mo i-handle o tatapusin ang isang bagay. Tama ba, Sir Ken? Tama yun, Matt. Kasi actually, as a teacher, may mga estudyante na kahit matalino sila, mabilis sila ma-overwhelm sa mga task. Minsan, kulang yung kumpiyansa or tiwala sa sarili mo. Remember, if you can't believe in yourself, paano mo magagawa yung isang task? Paano ka magiging convincing sa harap ng isang audience sa mga classmates mo kung ikaw mismo wala kang tiwala sa sarili mo either as you speak during online classes or as you submit your output so make sure na may right mindset ka o tamang pag-iisip or tiwala sa sarili para magawa mo yun actually Matt, I'm going to share one study na ginawa ni Blackwell noong 2002 marang two groups first group, sila yung sudyante na according to survey na ginawa ng researcher mas nagtiwala sila sa self nila and the second group naman, sila yung medyo May mindset sila na parang, ah, hindi ko ito kayang gawin. Hindi ko mapapasa yung examination. Now, guess what? The results na nandun sa study ay mas mataas po yung academic performance ng mga estudyante sa group A na mas nagtiwala sa sarili nila. So, sometimes, it's not about the wit or your intelligence. It's about how you believe in yourself. So, make sure in your next online class or next time as you do a task, make sure you would believe in yourself para alam mo na kaya mo yung gawin at magiging maganda yung outcome na. Sure. For the third tip, Law of readiness. You have to focus. Hindi ka papasok sa isang bagay kung hindi ka handa. Kung baga, hindi ka sasabak sa isang gera kung hindi kumpleto yung mga armas mo o yung mga taohan mo. Tama ba, Sir Ken? Tama yun, Matt. Kasi actually, when you study, dapat andyan na lahat. Okay? You know, one tip as a student before, and even up until now, na may mga times na ready na lahat, akala mo ready na lahat, pero ay wala pa pala akong ball pen, wala pa pala akong eraser, ay yung wifi pala kailangan kong i-restart kasi mabagal. Mm -hmm. So make sure, yung law of readiness, they remind tayo na actually galing siya kay Edward Thorndike, hindi na siya basta haka-haka or basta lang namin ginawa. So ibig sabihin nun, you have to be prepared before ka mag-start, dapat andyan na lahat. So dapat may checklist ka mat kung ano yung mga kailangan mo pag mag-aaral ka. Also one tip, dapat nakaligo ka na kasi iba yung feeling after yung maligo. Kasi pag hindi ka panaligo, di ba minsan hapon, nag-start ka ng task, tatamarin ka. After mong maligo, actually may effect siya sa'yo na parang you're ready to get things going, to get things started. That's also one tip na pwede namin maibigay, law of readiness. 
you have to make sure that you are prepared before you start with the things na gagawin mo. Remember, once you are prepared, you can get things done effectively. True. For the fourth tip, you have to know your learning style. We have our own different learning style. Alam nyo ba guys na nag-graduate si Sir Ken ng Valedictorian at Cum Laude nung college siya. So I have to ask this para malaman din ng viewers natin. Ano yung mga learning styles at ano yung learning style na ginamit? Well, actually, Matt, to nag-aaral ako, hindi ko talaga alam kung ano yung learning style. So, one thing that I would do when I was studying is, I would prepare for examination weeks before, before siya mangyari. Mm -hmm. Hindi ako nagka-cram. I also make sure na alam ko when and how to start studying. So, ngayon, you're very lucky because you will know the different learning styles and paano siya gagawin. So, just answer the question ng learning style ko before, Matt. Yung lahat ng na-memorize ko, I'll make sure to translate it in my own words. Also, I have to write down kung ano yung mga na-memorize ko, na-familiarize ko. Because I really believe that time, up until now, if you can translate it in your own words, you did not fully understand the lesson. So, eto na. May babasahin kaming four learning styles from the Grand Canyon University. May tinatawag silang VARK model or the VARK model which stands for Visual, Auditory, Reading, and Kinesthetic. So, pag visual learner ka, ikaw yung learner or ikaw yung estudyante na mahilig sa mga diagram, sa mga structure. Mahilig ka din sa mga colorful na mga handouts. Usually, gusto mo yung mga images. Images, true. Okay? Kailangan mo ng table, kailangan mo ng graph para mas maintindihan mo yung lesson. Okay? Another one, second natin, meron tayong auditory. Okay? That's why, Matt, hindi tama na parang iniisip mo na, ah, kailangan ko lagi mag-notes. Because there are some students who can survive even without taking down notes. Because these are auditory learners who would just love to listen to their teachers as they give lectures. Dapat nakafocus ka na lang sa teacher mo, full attention as you listen to your teacher. Yun yung auditory natin. Pangatlo, meron tayong reading or writing. Ito naman ako, Matt, nung estudyante ako. So, mahilig ako sa words, mahilig ako sa books, mahilig ako sa text. Kumbaga, ito yung medyo different so first natin sa visual. Yung visual, mahilig sa mga images, structures, diagram. Mm -hmm. Yung reading, writing naman natin na student, sila yung mahilig sa mga text. Okay? Sila yung mahilig sa mga words. Sila din yung mahilig mat na mag-research pa maghanap ng ibang information. That's what I do. And these are the students who would love to write down uh, notes when they listen to their teachers. Last, we have kinesthetic. Ang ginagawa sa kinesthetic learners sa Grand Canyon University, may learning in action na tinatawag. They would love to do things on their own. May minamanipulate sila, mm -hmm. may ginagalaw sila. Sila yung mga learners na ayaw magstay sa isang possession lang. Sila yung learners na gustong gumagalaw. So, these are the kinesthetic learners. So, kung ngayon hindi mo pa alam kung learning style mo, I would suggest try which among these four learning styles ang effective sa'yo. Visual ka ba? Auditory? Reading writing? Or kinesthetic learner? Kasi minsan, kaya hindi effective yung pag-aaral mo kasi hindi mo pala alam yung learning style mo. For tip number five, law of exercise. You have to be consistent. Hindi pwedeng sa una ka lang magaling. Dapat may time management ka din. You have to follow a schedule and when you feel lost, you have to go back to tip number two which is having a positive mindset. Tama yun, Matt, kasi kapag inisip mo na, ah, sabi sa tip sa vlog ni na Sir Kent, dapat na yung mga gagawin. Mm -hmm. What if sa first week mo lang yung nagawa? Okay, hindi pa yung ganun. You have to be disciplined. You have to do it constantly. And I would suggest, Matt, na alamin mo din kung anong effective time sa'yo to study. Okay? Kasi isa sa mga sinasabi nila, mas effective daw mag-aral kapag early morning. Okay? Now, there are actually several articles that I read about psychology na nagsasabi, Matt, depende siya sa tao. Kasi may mga tao na effective sa kanila na gabi. Actually, sabi sa psychology, mas effective daw po mag-aral kapag gabi bago matulog. Why? Because during the time na tulog ka na, pinaprocess daw niya ng brain mo kung ano yung mga nabasa mo before sleeping. Pinaprocess ng brain mo until the next day, medyo organized sa kahit pa paano. But again, case to case basis tayo. May mga students, may mga tao na mahilig silang mag-study at mas effective kapag early morning at meron namang mas effective kapag gabi. Sa mga students natin dyan, you have to discover kung ano yung mas effective sa inyo. I would suggest Try studying kapag afternoon, try studying kapag after lunch, try studying kapag early morning. 
kung ano sa tingin niyo yung effective sa inyo and do it constantly. Kung effective yun, then doon ka na magstay. Kung effective naman yung patingi-tingi, okay din naman yun. So, law of exercise. You have to do things constantly and tama si Matt. Hindi pwede yung suuna ka lang magaling kasi ang pangit ng ganun, mag-fail ka at hindi mo maating yung objective na gusto mong makuha which is to pass or have great grades dun sa iyong academic year. For our sixth study tip, ask for help. Pwede ka maghanap ng taong mas matanda sa'yo or yung makakatulong sa'yo. For example, wala kang masolve or hindi mo masolve yung specific math problem, pwede kang maghanap ng math major na student or pwede kang maghanap ng math wizard. Always remember that asking for help is not a sign of weakness. Sama pa, Sir Ken? Tama yun, Matt, kasi di ba as a teacher, alam ko sa sarili ko na sometimes it's effective for a group discussion. Mm -hmm. May mga nakikita ko nag-review sila by group. Meron din naman na solo. So, dito sa pag-ask ng help, dapat alam mo sa sarili mo kung ikaw ba yung student na independent or dependent. Yung kaya mo bang mag-solo or kaya mo sa group. Kasi ako mat na nag-aaral ako, mas gusto kong solo. <laughs> Wala kong maalala na ang daming beses akong nag-ask for help. So, again, it's not a sign of weakness. Pero, ang nag-work kasi sa akin pag-solo. So, minsan, nahingi lang ako ng help. Not really from time to time. Pero most of the time talaga, I would prefer to study alone and ask myself alone. Even kung nag-review actually sa pageant. So, wala ko usually nag-aaral doon. So, also, one help that, or one site that can help you is Course Hero. And I'm currently an online tutor there. I'm a specialist in science, specifically in the branches of chemistry, like biochemistry, uh, organic chemistry, and organic chemistry. So, if you're going to ask for help, I would suggest na higher year na lang sana. I'm not judging a certain section, okay? Yun ang na-observe ko as a teacher. I'm already, uh, I'm already on my fifth year of teaching, and yun yung common. May mga competition na nangyari, mini competition na nangyari. Pwede rin namang go directly to your teacher. Huwag kayong mahihiyang magtanong sa teacher or professor ninyo kasi trabaho po nila yan. Pero siyempre, bago kung humingi ng assistance sa teacher, make sure na ginawa mo din yung part mo. Oh. Hindi pwedeng ang blame sa teacher lang lagi. Hindi rin naman pwedeng sa estudyante lang, lang lagi. You have to meet halfway. Yes. Also, finding help ay pwede rin sa tao, pwede rin sa internet, True. kung saan ka comfortable. Again, asking for help is not a sign of faith. For our seventh study tip, have a break. Siguro naman lahat ay mag-agree na having a, having a break is good to refresh your body and bring to increase your energy, productivity, and ability to focus. So, hindi actually tama na straight ka mag-aaral. Kasi True. minsan, after an hour, yung brain mo kailangan din ang pahingay. Actually, isa sa mga i-share ko sa, na nangyari sa Nanyang Polytechnic University, sa isa sa mga klase ko, or everyday actually, kapag tapos na kami ng one hour, may break kami 10 minutes. Okay? Hindi pwede sa Nanyang Polytechnic sa Singapore, na during your break, may seat work pa ang teacher. Hindi pwede yun, Matt. Ang ginagawa namin kapag break, dapat tatayo talaga kami, dapat kakain kami, inom ng water. Hindi pwede na nakafocus pa rin yung mind mo o yung eyes mo sa screen or sa social media mo. That's why it's not actually right to use social media as your break. Why? Kasi minsan, ang tagal lang, tagal mo na lalo eh. Mas mahaba pa tuloy yung break mo kaysa sa study mo. Yung sinasabi natin sa first tip natin, you have to ask yourself. Kasi minsan, alam mo naman yung sagot kung bakit di ka effective mag-aral. Okay? Kasi sobrang dami lang tayo mo sa social media, pero konti yung tayo mo sa studies. Hindi pwede yun. Okay? So, on the link, or I will put the link on the description if you wanted to read the research saying that social media is not actually the right way for you to unwind or for you to have a break. Mm -hmm. Okay? Taking break in the middle of every hour or putting every after 30 minutes or every after one hour, sana maximum na yung one hour na pag-study. After one hour rest ka, 10 minutes lang yun. I would suggest, Matt, na mag-alarm kayo. Kasi minsan di mo napapansin eh. Mm. Minsan tsumika ka na sa mga bagkada mo, tsumika ka na sa family member mo, nakita mo na yung pet mo sa bahay. Yes. So make sure mag-alarm ka para balik ka ulit dun. Okay, remember, the purpose of break is not for you to relax already or to relax totally. To relax for a while pwede, but not to relax totally. Na nakalimutan mo na kung ano yung gagawin mo or yung ginagawa mong pag -aaral. For our eighth study tip, our last study tip actually, is look after yourself. You have to have the right place to study, you have to have time management, you have to be emotionally ready and physically ready to have an effective way of studying. Tama ba sir again? Tama yan. So looking after yourself before and after, especially during, will actually help you. Okay? 
So, one tip that I can give you as a professional teacher is that kapag may mga times na sunod-sunod yung deadline ninyo, pwede kayong magkaroon ng consensus or pag-uusap sa klase na pakiusapan niyo yung teacher, Ma'am, Sir, on behalf of my classmates, can we ask for a little extension of our project kasi ma-compromise yung mental health ninyo? Because sure. again, it's also your right as a student kasi iniisip ng teachers or professors din yun na ay konti lang namin pinapagawa. If you think you have too much on your plate, so you have to ask your professor for an extension if you know in yourself that you did your best to beat the deadline. Okay? But before asking your professor, you have to make sure na ikaw, ginawa mo talaga yung best mo. Kasi pwede yung iniisip mo naman na, ah, pwede naman pala humingi ng extension. Dapat ikaw, alam mo sa sarili mo na, ginawa mo talaga yung part mo para ma-manage yung time mo ng maayos. Tama. Okay? As you look after yourself, you have to assess kung okay pa yung mental health mo throughout the process. Because as you do one project, kung pinagpuyatan mo yan, paano yung next subject mo? Sure. You have to remember that you do not only have one subject. So, dapat mabudget mga yung energy mo sa paggawa ng mga tasks na binibigay. Especially ngayon na online. Ang dami binibigay, ang dami nasa Google Classroom. So, make sure na manage mo yun ng maayos. And balikan nyo yung tip na binigay namin. Do not forget to ask for your help. Okay, pwedeng tulong-tulong kayo ng mga friends nyo, classmates, or older brother or sister, or someone older than you sa mas mataas sa grade level. That would really help you. Sure. And ask your teacher kung may di ka naintindihan ng instruction. Okay? So, that's very, very important. Look after yourself because after all, it's you na nagmamatter. Today is the right day for you to manage your time well and learn how to focus on the things that really matter, especially when you do your tasks. Sure. So, there you have it, guys. Ayun na po yung 8 study tips for students proven by science. So we will just put the links of the references that we used because we mix them. These are based from science and also from our experience as a student and of course me being a professional teacher. If you have any suggestions on what we can help you in our next episode, like tutorial on how to present online, how to conquer fear when presenting in online classes, how to prepare your assignment, how to do your project efficiently, you can just comment it down on the comment section or email us at kentxmat at gmail.com. Again, you have to be consistent to have an effective way of studying. Thank you guys for watching, but for now, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button for you to get updated on our next episode. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe, folks.